Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial here on NoiseJunkies.net. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at how to create some abstract animations and renders with MoGraph's tracer object. Let's take a look at what we can do with it. Cool, so it sounds pretty simple but you know the whole process is actually very very useful in many other different examples. and. We, we can see some pretty cool things happening here like in the beginning because of the transparency of the material we don't have reflections on the sphere until you know they start actually growing like that and you can test different shapes and you can have a lot of different cool outcomes cool so here in our project you can see for this particular one I use the rectangle and I'm gonna be using that in the tutorial as well but I'll give some tips on using all the splines every single spline that's in here can be used for the MoGraph tracer so I definitely encourage right away to be playing around after you watch the tutorial. And without further ado, let's just start it. So I'll go to File, New, and I'll create a new project, obviously. And now I'll just jump right in and select my rectangle for the tutorial purposes. And you can scale it up or down depending on you know what you want. The big concept in here is that the MoGraph tracer will kind of well have points of reference in each of the corners, in each of the edges of this rectangle. So, you know, we're going to have four cylinders. Anyways, now go to MoGraph and go to Tracer. And in the Tracer parameters here, we can see a lot of different options, but I'm not going to be really spending a lot of time explaining them, although they're pretty all kind of straightforward. The only thing that's important in the Tracer object parameters is that the Tracer link has this empty space and right now there's a rectangle but you can delete the rectangle and if you have another spline like a star you know you can add that star in there in the tracer and then now it's gonna trace the star and if you wanna trace the rectangle you can trace the rectangle or both so here is where you're gonna be you know setting what the tracer object is gonna be tracing alright so just for the sake of not being confused I just deleted the star we're gonna have the rectangle now and we'll add a simple animation so in frame 0, I'm going to drag this in the z-axis there. I'll set a keyframe, and then I'll go to the, my wireframe mode. I'll go to the top view, scale it up a little bit, and then I'm going to make this 270 frames instead of 90, so we have more room for animation. And then I'll go to the last frame and really drag this so we have a long animation. And I'll set a keyframe, of course. So now we have this simple animation here. Cool. So now the second thing you're going to be adding is a rotation. So I'm going to be rotating this around 360 degrees in the last frame. So we're going to have a full rotation like that. Now, what's the practical, you know, usage for it? Because if we play right now, we'll see that the edges are kind of being tracked like that. But if we render, we're going to see nothing. Well, but if you were to splice before, you know that you have to, you know, actually make them solid. So we're going to the NURB settings and select the sweep NURBs and then go to the spline and select a circle. The sweep nerves, the way it works is it makes it roundy and spherical, but you have to add a circle inside it. And the circle is pretty much the radius of how massive your object is going to be. So I want it to be this wide, and I'm going to apply it to the sweep nerves. And I'm also going to apply the tracer object inside the sweep nerves. So now if you play the animation, you're going to see something weird happening. Okay, so I got the, the size of the circle right. And another killer tip here, the size of the circle is very important, but also make sure you place the circle on top and the tracer below. That's actually the main problem of mine. So right now we have that circle of white, but you can also, you know, make it wider anytime you want by just increasing the circle and you see everything's thicker now. But remember, the tracer goes on the bottom. If you put the tracer on the top of the sweep nerves, we're going to have that problem. So... Anyways, just a quick tip. I was, I was actually confused too, as you can notice. And if we hit play, we can see now we have something pretty cool and abstract that looks like a little bit the introduction and the animation I showed you guys. Okay, so I just kind of panned around and I got inside my thing in here, and you can see, pretty cool. A little different than the original one, but that just play around with how distant it is and how thick it is. You probably make a little less thick. Uh, like that and have a better outcome. 
Now let's play around with the material, but before, let's add a sky and a light here in the center. And now also a sphere in the middle in there, like so. But make sure in the wireframe top view, you, you position it you know, all the way in the back. Cool. So now let's create the material that's going to be kind of central for, for everything. So I'm going to do this magical thing here. And for the color, I want to set it something. Ah, whoops. I want to set it something like this. But you can change this pretty easily. You know, it's up to you. Color is you decide it. And then for reflection, I want to set it 60% reflective. In case you can't see, those are kind of the settings. If you want to really just copy and paste the settings. And for the color, I want to set it something like this too. Cool. Set OK. And now for the environment, it's a little tricky. I'm not sure what I did. Uh, but I think I added an image. Actually, I'll not do anything right now. And maybe if we need, I'll add it later. But the key thing here in the material is the transparency to set their brightness to 70% so it's not completely transparent. And set it refraction to 1.5. And last but not least, the glow, we're going to set the inner strength to 50% and the outer strength to 30%. And again, just play around with all those values. And then apply to the sphere and apply to the sweep nerves. Okay, so we can see there's it's way too glowy. So we just kind of go on the glow parameters in here and set this like um, 20% and especially this one to 20% as well. Also for the reflection, let's set it to something like 20% and a little more white, like so. And you know, if you really want to change the green color to something else, that's good. Also for the sky, let's create a material and since I'm working on green, we'll create a sky that's kind of uh, green as well, like something like this. Great color. Okay, and then we'll apply it to the sky and let's see what happens. Okay, so that's much better and, you know, I think that already kind of looks like a pretty cool outcome. Remember to play around with the sphere and where it is. Use a lot of the z-axis in here. Maybe we want to place it a little more, like, distant. That's totally fine as well, it reflects a little bit more. And it also takes much less to render, although that's probably because the wind is also shorter. But, anyways, you now we can create some a lot of really interesting renders in here. And remember, you can use any other spline and you'll be the same effect. If you, if you were to use another spline, I'll just quickly show something like the flower, for example. It'll look pretty cool as well. And instead of four points, you would have a bunch of points, as you can see. So you can definitely create some really cool renders of you know the tracer plugin and it's pretty fast and effective as well. So I hope you guys learned something useful today and thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time.